So we're here with Toby Buckland. Welcome back. Thank you. What's um what's brought you back again this year? Well, I do like a festival. And I, I, this is a very friendly one, actually. This is something that uh, Gerard asked me to come back, and I was only too happy, actually. Because um, th- th- it's a very interactive sort of space, and you get to meet lots of people, and I always enjoy that. And you recognise a few faces from last year? Yeah, 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 more than a few. I mean, it's great fun, because I give talks on um, you know, different aspects of gardening. This year I'm talking about herbs. But, you know, you get lots of people shouting out there, it's very heckling, which is great fun, yeah. Really vociferous crowd. And you've already done one this morning as well, so... Yeah, we're on another one this afternoon. So did you have any heckles this morning? Oh, yeah, 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 talking about some of the... Oh, I wouldn't grow that! <laughs> <laughs> it's it self sows everywhere in my garden, you know, you should be so lucky. Yeah. You know, but it was, um, yeah... Uh, what I like to do is come to the festival and pick out some plants that the stall holders are selling, oh, and then just talk about those. Um, so there's so, not a lot of planning in it. Quite well, the, 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 that's a bit harsh, I'd say. <laughs> it's no, hours of work. Not a dare to just do anything other than prepared. <laughs> well, it's more. It's really more that you can't, this has quite particular growing um, conditions here. It's windy, yeah. high rainfall. Spring can be slow to get going, you know, so there's certain plants that do well and there's no better way of finding out which those are than by looking at what the nursery sell. Yeah. And so that's my, always my starting point, whether I'm sort of preparing at home or preparing on site, so, yeah. And of course it's the time of year that everybody's sort of getting into the garden and things like that. What would you say to somebody that is just sort of complete, sort of garden and phobic and just doesn't want to get out there because obviously they need a lot of attention? Well, they do. I mean, garden near the house, that's the... Mm-hmm. That's the first thing. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that if it's easy to pop out and do something, you're more likely to do it. Yeah. And secondly, that if you live in a place that's near the coast and, and it's breezy, if you put plant up containers, for example, in pots near the house, they don't get buffeted around. Then you can put them a bit further away, but just let them start start off in the shelter of the brickwork. It'll make a big difference to uh, survival rates. And last year you were with, you were up here near uh, Charlie Dimmock and James yeah. Wong, and then this year there's just you and Joe Swift. Yeah. And that's have it. you worked with James? Um, Joe yeah, yeah, I worked for years with him. Um, I used to, uh, we, but Joe and I would breakfast twice a week in Birmingham. We worked for the BBC together on Garden as well. And so we'd always be in Birmingham and talking about, you know, we're both Arsenal fans, um, talking about the misery of our life. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 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 like yeah, we have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like Joe very much. So, have like. you, you snuck into his talk yet? Yeah, well, I, mean. I was hoping to. I know he's on in an hour. And in a couple of hours, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna You're gonna sneak. And get some oh, I'll give him some help. Yeah. yeah. He got my, give me, give me a good idea there. <laughs> See? You knew there was a reason he came to talk to us. <laughs> so, um, you won an award at um, Chelsea. Yeah. Um, but what everyone really, really wants to know is what is the state of your garden? Oh, it's well. Actually, what I've been doing, I'm sort of putting in. I've got rid of my which kids' trampoline. Finally, has left. And uh, it, it's more out of dilapidation than anything else. It's just had a lot of use, and that's freed up a brand new area. So um, I'm kind of uh, replanting that before we get another one. So your mind sort of started reeling now, and you've got ideas sort of. Yeah, in yeah. Well, and the other thing is, it's basically it happens to most gardens. You, you put in, say, decking, for example, which I've done, and I've had for years. It's been really lovely. But now that's starting to go, and I'm thinking, oh, I could just do something warmer. So I'm thinking of getting a load of stone in and, and replacing that. Um, I'm sort of unusual in that because I have my garden at home, which is quite tropical and lots of lush leaves plants in it, but I also have a nursery and that has more, uh, it's very flowering and one of the, my big big projects this year, because it's new ground, it's quite heavy and it's uh, also got a pan in it, you know, so what happens is you get a layer of soil and it compacts and that can be below where you dig with the spade blocks water from travelling down through the soil, stops nutrients, stops a lot of the soil life. You have to break that. You can do it with a plow, you can do it with a pickaxe, and uh, these things are all quite oh, interventionist and hard work. So what I'm doing is growing a big forest of sunflowers. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so it's not, I'm hoping they'll do the work for me because they, 
once they sown, sunflowers, well, they anchor themselves on very deep roots, and this, this, this idea that they'll go down through fissures in the soil and then help open up the ground. So, well, sunflowers, I am a gardening novice. Yeah. I've never ever been able to plant one, even if I start with one in a tiny little tub. Really? So, yeah, so what am I doing wrong? Well, <laughs> closing the name, they need a lot of sun in an open spot, and they don't like being buffeted around by the breeze. That said, there are different types of sunflowers. So there are the easiest to grow, which teddy bear types are very short. Um, they won't break up your soil, but they are reliable. And then there's the multi-headed ones, and these ones I think would be good for you because most sunflowers that we know have one stem that goes right up and a massive, great big flower on the top. Yeah. Um, but that's not the only type of sunflower because you only get one flower on those. There are types that produce smaller blooms that are great for cut flowers right through the summer. So you, you get dozens and dozens and dozens of heads. And the, the other thing that's lovely about them, there are yellow forms, but they're also slightly more interesting colours like white and deep velvet reds. So there we are. Oh, those are the ones yeah, you should look at those. So you've obviously got a, view, a vast knowledge that I've just asked you a question and you can just pluck right. what I need off the top of your head. I'm all right. Where did, you, <laughs> where did your sort of gardening enthusiasm come from? Well, the thing, I've always had a love of the great outdoors. That was it. And I, always, my first job was as a gardener when I was a schoolboy. And basically, I thought, oh, I'm quite good at this. And you see, the thing about gardening is it's just lots and lots of little bits of information all strung together into a craft. And most people know something about gardening. They just don't think they do. You, you know? realise it. Yeah, don't realise it. We've all, you know, and it's when those bits of knowledge start to join together, you just think, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm, I can call myself legitimately. Gardener, you know, because we all know, you know, remember what our mums and dads and grandparents did, and you, you think you forget this information till you do it again. Yeah, it almost flooded back. Yeah, it's like, it's like a lesson from school almost, isn't it? You don't even think about it until something just jogs your memory about lipids or whatever it is from yeah. chemistry, you know, and then you'll say, Oh, I know a bit about that. So, that, so, it is with so you try and get your children involved with gardening, or are they sort of well, if dad, dad's job is really boring? Well, I do. My son works for me. Uh, in, I have a, a plant shop, and he, he goes in there. And, uh, well, I wouldn't say reluctantly, but you know, it's just you know, he's got a, he's, someone's got to pay for that mobile phone. It's not going to be me. <laughs> yeah. And well, it is me. And, it's, and then uh, the um, my daughter really likes it. And that, that, on the other hand, is, is a, is a um, has proved as more of a challenge than I thought because I try all lots of seeds and I get them sent in the post and different varieties of my nurseries, lots of flowers and stuff. Anyway, I was just wondering where loads of them have gone this year. I was thinking, oh, I wonder if, the, if they've arrived. I'll have to chase up the sunflowers, for example. Of course, I came home the other day and my sister said, oh, do you want to see my farm? And she basically planted up. You know, dozens and dozens of seeds in an area like this, this sort of big, a lot of them, which are my trial seeds. So, all terribly done, you know, cheek the jowls. But yeah, it's, uh, um, you know, you want to encourage it, but you know, there is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, because I've got plenty to get out of. But I, in a way, I thought it's quite sweet that she's sort of opening up my mail and um, what else she's been doing with the bills? If anyone's uh, <laughs> pay anyone any money, that is the reason. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Nice Thank you.